Namaste everybody and welcome to my channel. Today I will be doing a review of the narrative of the life of Frederick Douglass, an American slave. Um, so let's get right into it after a few comments. If you like this video, please like, comment, and subscribe. I'm trying to get to 100 subscribers by the end of this year and it'd be really awesome if you were a part of that. Okay, as a warning, I will be talking about slavery, human trafficking, and physical violence in detail. If any of this turns you off or if any of this triggers you, please click off of this video and watch another video on my channel. Okay, before I start, I have a really funny story relating to how I got introduced to that book. But before I say this funny story, I would like to thank John Talbert and Dr. Dixon as well as Cornelius McGrady for helping me uh, write, review the script. It was really awesome. Thank you so much for help, uh, helping me and I couldn't appreciate you enough. So here's the story. A couple years ago, Kenneth B. Morris Jr., who is the great, great, great grandson of Frederick Douglass and the great, great grandson of Booker T. Washington, came and talked at one of the high schools in my area. I went and attended because I was a giant nerd, I still am, and I loved going to different talks and hearing like um, different things about the world. So I went to this one with my dad and my brother, and I watched the talk. Honestly, I don't remember that much, mainly because I was a lot younger. Um, anyways, I remember being wowed. After the talk, Mr. Morris was doing signings of the narrative. Me, as a scared shy kid, I was too scared to go up and get my own signed copy. Uh, so this copy is signed out to my brother and it says, To Dev, For Freedom. And it's really cool that like an actual descendant of Frederick Douglass has like signed this book and I got to meet him and that was like such an awesome experience. So anyways, let's go on and get, let's go on with it. It is not light we need, but a fire. Not a gentle shower, but thunder. We need the storm, the whirlwind, the, and the earthquake. This quote means a lot to me in this world where teenage suicide rates are at an all-time high. Gun violence is rampant in our streets. And school shootings, well, they're becoming the new normal. A world where our, like, a world that is slowly becoming inhabitable. A world where 50 million people worldwide live in some kind of form of modern slavery. The narrative, in my opinion, is one of the most influential books ever written. It is important and influential not only within the historical context of when this book got published, but also because of its relevance in this day and age. It has been more than 177 year years since these words were first inked onto paper, but they're still so meaningful and important. I think the reason for this can be summed up into this quote. His story is the best of our stories. At its core, it is, is the loving heart of a fearless little boy. A little boy with the courage to love a broken and unjust world. As Douglas himself said in a phrase fit for the American motto, we are one, our cause is one, and we must help each other if we are to succeed. End of quote. His story is our story. The horrors he faced are un unimaginable, but they are something we have to confront if we want to move forward, forward and solve the problems that are currently plaguing our society today. The narrative explicitly lays out Mr. Douglas's experiences as an enslaved person, and it makes sense within the historical context of the book. Uh, this book was initially written to expose Northerners to the horrifying things happening to African American slaves in the South. The Northerners obviously knew about slavery, but this book made them confront the horrors in explicit detail. This book is written to make you uncomfortable. It's supposed to make you question the history and the ideals of America, and it just it does just that. This book is written in, in, in an extremely readable way. Um, it's very simple uh, and concise. Even though it was written 177 years ago, it was still a lot more readable than a lot of the other classics I've read before. And it was really awesome. I really enjoyed reading it. It's like one of my favorite books I've ever enjoyed reading. And it took, it took me a couple months to get through, but that was mostly because of my own problems, um, like with finding time to read and all that. But yeah, so some background on Frederick Douglass before we start. Uh, so Frederick Douglass is a famous abolitionist, orator, newspaper publisher, and author. He was the first black U.S. Marshal and also the most photographed American man of the 19th century. Uh, so those are some pretty cool fun facts. And now on to the book. One of the first things Frederick Douglass mentions is how he never knew exactly when he was born. His closest estimate was February of 1818. He explains that the white children could tell their age, but the black kids were not allowed that privilege. He was separated from his mother at a young age when he was an infant. 
He, that, that was an uncommon at the time. Most children born into slavery were taken away from their mothers. The mother was sent to a farm far, far away, and the child was placed into the care of an older woman who was too old to work in the fields. One especially horrifying part of the narrative that stood out to me explains when it explains uh, the first time Frederick Douglass watched one of his aunts get beaten. This section of the book reads like this. I've often been awakened at the dawn of the day by the most heart-rendering shrieks of an own aunt of mine, whom he used to tie up to a hoist and whip upon her naked back till she was literally covered with blood. No words, no tears, no prayers from his gory victim seemed to move his iron heart from its bloody purpose. The louder she screamed, the he harder he would whi he whipped, and where the blood ran fastest, where he there he whipped longest. He would whip her to make her scream and whip her to make her hush, and not until overcome by fatigue would he cease to swing the blood-clotted cowskin. I remember the first time I ever, ever witnessed this horrible exhibition. I was quite a child, but I remember it. I shall never forget it whilst I remember anything. It was the first of a long series of so such outrages, of which I was doomed to be witness and participant. It struck me with awful force. It was the blood-stained gate, the entrance through to the hell of, of slavery, which I was about to pass. It was the most terrible spectacle. I wish I could commit to paper the feeling with which I beheld it. Before reading the narrative, I understood slavery, of course, but only to the most basic levels. After reading it, I truly understood the true horrors of slavery. Throughout the book, Douglas talks in, in detail about his life as an enslaved per person and his eventual escape. He explains the injustices that enslaved people faced, and he explains how, like, he was able to get past that and how much he wanted to get past that, I guess. He explains learning how to read and write and what liberation that is. That's something that we don't really talk about, the importance of reading and writing. I don't really, every time I read or write, I don't really think about the liberty I'm gaining from it. Through reading and writing, I learn about the world and can think about my future. I can think about my past and I can think about my present. Reading and writing allow me to do what I love and they allow me to advocate for change. They also allow me to make these videos. And this was a freedom that enslaved people were not given. The story ends with Frederick Douglass talking about his life as a free man. He talks about being able to keep his income and being able to get married. He talks about owning his own clothes. Frederick Douglass did incredible things with his life, but one of his most significant and the most important accomplishment, in my opinion, was abolishing slavery. Though slavery has been abolished and it's been abolished for more than 150 years now, it lives on in different forms. Modern age slavery, according to most recent estimates, affects 50 million people worldwide. There are more people enslaved in the world right now than at any point in history and they're all hidden in plain sight. According to the International Labor Union, which is a branch of the UN, modern slavery, as defined for the report, is comprised of two principal components, forced labor and forced marriage. Both refer to situations of exploitation that a person cannot refuse or cannot leave because of threats, violence, coercion, deception, or abuse of power. Forced labor, as defined by the ILO, Forced Labor Convention, um, 1930, refers to all works, all work or services which is exacted from any persons under the menace of any penalty and for which the said person has not offered himself voluntarily. In the private, the private economy includes all forms of forced labor other than state imposed forced labor. Many modern day enslaved people are forced to work in harsh conditions for little to no pay. They usually have no control over the work that they are doing, and they have little chance of escape. So most common industries for modern day slavery are some of the most well known. According to the Department of Homeland Security, just within the domestic labor trafficking sector, 59% of all forced labor happens within the other section, which they define sort of as restaurants, slash food services, hospitality, and etc. The second highest sector is domestic work, with 19%. A lot of people believe that human trafficking in America and human trafficking all over the world is related to prostitution and sexual abuse, but that simply is not true. 
According to CNN Business, 20% of the calls received by the human trafficking resource since 2007 have been non-sexual labor related. You may be wondering how these traffickers find their victim. It's pretty simple actually. Most traffickers don't abduct their victims off the street. They don't have a black, a white van with candy in it. No, they trick them. Human traffickers lull their victims into a false sense of security with promises of a better life, money, or a chance to come to the United States. Traffickers will use everything and anything from the promises of jobs, training, education, money, fame, and even marriage to get to their victims. A lot of their victims come to, to them through social media. According to Liberate Children, traffickers use social media to identify children, recruit them, and advertise potential children for trafficking. End quote. It is essential to keep, your safe sa keep yourself safe from traffickers. One of the ways to do this is to be aware of what is happening around you, whether physically or online. The narrative by Frederick Douglass helped me understand why slavery is so horrific and why we need to work to stop it in all modern forms. Uh, here's a quote. He never gave up on himself or his people. He continued to fight for the freedom, freedom of others, which makes it possible to be who I am. Uh, that is an expert out of the section in this specific copy of um, the narrative, which like relays uh, what the narrative means to different people. So Frederick Douglass sort of made it possible for me to be who I am. He made it possible for millions of people to be who they are. And now more than 50 million people are enslaved. That is something that we cannot let happen. After he courageously fled bondage, he didn't want to be just not enslaved. He wanted to be free. Another quote. So we need to work to get those people in modern day slavery out. We need to, like, we need to do that. And we also need to make sure that that can never happen again because that just, we are in the 21st century. That should not be happening to this day. You have greatness flowing through your veins too. The great force of history comes from the fact that you carry it within you and it is present in all you do. So everyone has greatness flowing through their veins. Uh, that is another quote from the narrative. Yeah, I think you all should check out the book. I have a link in the description with a place where you can like buy it and a PDF version, I believe. So thank you so much. If you like this video, please like, subscribe, and comment. I am trying to get to 100 subscribers by the end of the year and it'd be really, really, really awesome if you helped me get to this goal. Bye.